The Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES for short, is the world's most widely used encryption standard. It's protecting your messages, your files, and your web traffic right now. Now, this was originally called Raindoll, which was named after its creators, who were Belgian. And unlike its predecessors, like DES, which was cracked, the AES-256 is considered mathematically unbreakable when used correctly. Even quantum computers aren't expected to break this. And in 2001, it became the U.S. government's official encryption standard. So needless to say, it's widely used, it's really secure, and it's something that you should at least understand conceptually how it works. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Now, most programming languages have support for AES built in because it is that widely used. We're going to be using C Sharp today, and we're going to be using .NET 9. Now, this code will work in .NET 8, 7. I'm not doing anything fancy here. These are standard base class library classes. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a class that will handle the encryption and decryption of our data. So let's go ahead and right click our project. We're going to add a new class. I will call this the encryption service. And when we're working with encryption using AES, there's a couple things we're going to need. We're going to need a key because most encryption and hashing is based on some kind of key or passphrase. So let's go ahead and get that set up first. We'll create a local field, and it will be a byte array, because that's how we like to work with memory streams and things like that. And we will call this key. And then let's set up a constructor where we can pass the key in when we create this service. Now, normally this key is going to come from a certificate or something that you've generated. I'm going to keep things simple, so I'm just going to pass in a passphrase, basically just a string of text, and I'm going to hash it into a 256-bit hash. Now, keep in mind, this is not how you do it in the real world. That's my caveat. You would generate a key using an appropriate tool. You would need to back that up because if you ever lost that key, you would lose access to all your encrypted data. So one of the things I like to tell beginners is that when you're working with encryption, your key management and securing your keys is often more difficult than writing the code itself. Now, one thing that does greatly impact how secure your AES encryption is, is the key size. So the key size, 128, 192, 256 bits, you know, you can even go past that to 512, but 256 is kind of the sweet spot. So the first thing I want to do since I'm using a passphrase is this key that comes in, I'm going to just quickly hash it into a 256-bit hash. Now, normally you would want to use like pbkdf2 as the hashing algorithm because that's more secure, but that does require downloading an external package and we're just trying to keep things simple. This is a toy example. We're going to use the built-in SHA hashing algorithm to do this. So let's go ahead and import two namespaces here. We're going to use system.security.cryptography. And we're going to use system.text because I am going to print this hash, which means I'm going to convert it to a hex string. We're going to say using var, and we're going to do SHA-256. And we will create a hasher, just like that. And then the key will be assigned to the result of the hash value. So we're gonna say SHA-256 dot compute hash. We're gonna give it some encoding. We'll get the bytes based on that key. Then we can go ahead and print this out just so we can see it. to 
do that, we're going to convert it to a hex string. And there we go. Now we have a constructor. We can send our passphrase in. It will hash it so that we have a consistent length. It's going to be 256 bit key. The next thing we're going to do is write our encrypt function. So we're going to say public string encrypt. We're going to be passing in plain text. Now, how do we do this? Well, first, we're going to create an AES object that will handle the AES encryption. So I'm going to say using var AES equals, we're going to use the factory to create that object. We need to provide it with a key, which we have. And next, we want to work with an initialization vector. So what is an initialization vector, or IV? Well, I'm going to put the code in here real quick. Generate IV. And that's really helpful, right? Now you know what it does. Of course you don't. So let's talk about this. The initialization vector is a 16-byte randomly generated byte array. And what you will do is place this as part of the encrypted message. And it basically randomizes things. So if two people want to encrypt a message, like let's say we're encrypting SMS messages for your phone. If you don't have a random initialization vector, then if I send a text, hello, and somebody else sends a text, hello, those two encrypted results will be exactly the same. And if those are exactly the same, that makes it easier for hackers and automated processes to look at encrypted data and figure out some patterns. So what this IV does is it guarantees that if two people are encrypting the same text, the result of that encryption will be two different values. Now next, like a lot of cryptography functions, we're going to be using streams because we're going to need to pipe data through and transform it. And the first stream we're going to create is a memory stream. But before I do this, I want to take a moment and remind you as a viewer that if you're into C Sharp and you want to learn C Sharp the right way, check out skillfoundry.io. We have videos like this, extensive code samples, hundreds of hours of lessons, and really rigorous projects and capstones for you to work on, all backed by a Discord community where me and other senior developers are available to answer your questions. So check out skillfoundry.io if you're interested in going deeper in the craft. So let's go ahead and create this memory stream. We're going to use a using statement because we always want to clean up after ourselves when we're using streams. So we'll call this MS Encrypt for memory stream. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the initialization vector value into the stream. As I said, this does some randomization, but that means we need to keep the IV with the message somehow. Now, since I'm just writing a simple application, the easiest way for me to do this is to just write it to the front of the encrypted message so I can just pull it off later. So I'm going to say MS encrypt. We're going to write. What are we going to write? The IV value starting at position zero. And how many bytes are we going to write? Well, we want all of them. So we're going to tell it to write the length. And now the initialization vector is the first part in the stream. Now we can do the rest of this stuff. So let's go ahead and create our encryptor. And this is a method of just calling the factory method, create encryptor, not decryptor. I have been betrayed by my autocomplete. There we go. And we're gonna need a stream for this and we're gonna create a crypto stream. And we're gonna tell it that we're gonna use the memory stream. We're gonna use our encryptor from our AES. And we're gonna tell it that we're gonna write. And 
and there we go. If we want to write our plain text into the stream, we're going to have to convert it to a byte array. So let's do that real quick. We'll call this plain bytes. We'll ask our encoding class to go ahead and pull this out using the UTF-8 format. And this is the byte array that we want to encrypt. So the next thing we do is we say, hey, uh, crypto stream, I have a job for you. I would like you to write the plain bytes starting at position zero and continue on for the whole length. And then we're going to go ahead and flush it. Now we will return in base 64 our memory stream contents as an array. And that's all there is to it. We got the initialization vector, we set up our memory stream, we set up our encryption stream, we put the initialization vector at the front of the memory stream. Notice that we didn't encrypt that part. The encrypted message comes after that. So we've done some juggling here with our streams to put the initialization vector in first and then write the encrypted data behind it. This way we can pull the initialization vector off of the front of that message later and use it for decryption. Next, let's write a method to decrypt the data. We're going to say public string decrypt. And we're going to take in the encrypted text, which I'm going to call the ciphertext. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is convert this to a byte array. And the reason I'm calling this combined bytes is remember that the initialization vector is at the front. We're going to convert this from a base 64 string. And it's just important that since we converted it to a base 64 string in our encryption, we need to convert it back using the same format in decryption or we're going to get a problem. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is put in some defensive coding here. We're going to say if the combined bytes length is less than 16, then we don't have an initialization vector and we have a problem. So in that case, we will throw a new argument exception and we'll just say this is an invalid ciphertext length. Now we're gonna set up our AES encryption again. So we're gonna say using var AES equals AES.create. We're gonna assign the key this needs to be the same key as we used before. This is very important. And this is why if you work with encryption, securing your keys and backing them up is really important because if you lose your key, uh, you are cooked. The next thing we'll do is we'll create a byte array to hold the initialization vector. Now we know that that is 16 bytes. That's part of the AES standard. It will always be 16 bytes. And then we're just gonna copy that initialization vector off of our combined bytes. We're going to start at position zero. We're going to pass it in to the IV byte array. And we only want 16 bytes. And now what remains in the combined bytes is going to be the encrypted message. So the next time we access here, we're going to start 16 bytes in. And now that we have the initialization vector, the rest of the decryption is basically doing the encryption process in reverse. So the first thing we're going to do is create a decryptor. We're going to ask the AES object to create a decryptor for us. That's going to use our key and our initialization vector. Then we're going to need a memory stream. So we're going to call this MS Decrypt. 
And what does this memory stream need? Well, we're going to use the combined bytes, but we're going to offset it because that did have the initialization vector at the front. So we're going to offset it by 16 bytes. And then we're going to make sure we don't overflow by not going to the length, but the length minus 16 to account for that adjustment. Next, we're going to need a CS decrypt, which is going to be a crypto stream. And it's going to use the MS decrypt. It's going to use the decryptor. And this time, we're going to have read mode. Previously, we wrote. This time, we read. Like I said, this is just the original process, kind of in reverse. Then we'll get a stream reader. And we'll give it our decryptor. And to return a string, all we need to do now is take this stream reader and tell it to read to end. And that returns a string. And that's it. Our decryption and our encryption are finished. Now we can go over to our program CS and we can test it out. So let's go ahead and jump over to program.cs. Now I am going to copy and paste the code in here. All this does is set up a menu for our console application. If I choose encrypt text, it's going to call our encryptor. It's going to echo back the encrypted value, which will include the IV to the console. And then I should be able to copy and paste that value and tell it to decrypt it and it should bring it back out. So let's go ahead and run our app. And here we go. I would like to encrypt some text. Hello world. And here is the encrypted text. And if I go back and tell it to decrypt it, and I paste that in, you can see that the value came back out. And that's really all there is to AES encryption. Now, these types of values, because that IV is at the front, we can write these values to a file or we could write it to a database. This text is now encrypted. But the important thing here is that I used this very, very insecure passphrase for convenience. So this is what goes into the constructor and what we use to create that 256-bit key. In a real world application, you would want to generate this somewhere else, probably in a certificate. You would want to back that up. You would want to secure it. You would want to store it. You would never put your secret key in your source code and put that anywhere because anybody who gets that key can decrypt your data. And if you lose that key, like I said before, you're cooked. You won't be able to encrypt your own data. So with that in mind, don't be afraid of encrypting your data because as you could see here in this video, this is not a lot of code and the code is not very complicated. But that key and the choices you make about how many bytes you want these things to be, those are the critical things that are going to make or break you in encryption. Happy coding.